Hello, my name is William Hurley, and I'm an upcoming second year PhD student at the University of Michigan's Plasma Dynamics and Electric Propulsion Laboratory. And today I'm going to talk to you a little bit about hall thrusters, uh, why we might want to scale them to higher power, how we might scale in the higher power via high power density operation, and then how we might mitigate some of the performance losses we expect to see at a high power density operation. So just a brief overview of how hall thrusters work. Um, you see a hall thruster on the left and then a um, projected cutout um, of that hall thruster on the right. And they're composed, comprised of an inner and outer magnetic coil um, that is shown in orange to represent something like copper, uh, which couple together to produce a primarily radial magnetic field that you see in blue in the channel. We have a cathode, which emits most of our electrons, and an anode, which is positively charged, which attracts the electrons. These electrons uh, are, like I said, attracted to the anode, but their motion is impeded by the uh, radial magnetic field in blue. So we emit a neutral gas like xenon from our anode, these xenon atoms collide with the high energy electrons um, and due to the local potential drop due to the high resistivity created by our magnetic field, these uh, newly formed ions are accelerated out of the channel to produce thrust. So a focus of my research is increasing the power of these devices and specifically um, increasing them to powers beyond uh, 100 kilowatts and understanding their behavior. And the reason we want to do this is we want to make these devices feasible for human missions to Mars. But current scaling laws dictate that um, to make our thrusters higher power and maintain the same efficiency, we must make them larger in size. And when we make them larger in size, um, they become heavier. And then this um, you know, mass penalty that we uh, acquire uh, may make them not the best candidates anymore for um, human transports to Mars. And so rather than increasing the physical size of these devices, um, we can increase the power density. So we maintain the same um, channel, same channel architecture, but we just insert more neutrals and flow more electrons from our cathode, produce more ions, um, generate more thrust and, you know, pow you know hence power um, uh, in that way. However, um, there's reasons to believe that uh, at high power density operation, we might suffer some performance losses. And uh, to motivate why this might be the case, um, you know, because we have simply more particles in the channel, uh, the electrons will make more collisions with neutrals and they'll be more mobile across the field lines. And so what this means is, is that we'll spend power conducting these electrons rather than uh, accelerating ions. And uh, anytime we, you know, are spending power not accelerating ions, that's an efficiency loss. And so one thing that we can do to potentially uh, mitigate these performance losses is increase the magnetic field strength. Uh, the magnetic field uh, stops the electrons and thus increasing magnetic field strength will uh, help these electrons stay localized in the channel. Currently, the way we design our devices, we use a series of coils like I showed in ferromagnetic material that amplifies the, um, the field of the coils into the shape that we want. But this ferromagnetic material saturates after a certain point. And what that means is that it no longer can increase the field strength anymore into the shapes that we want. And so I'm using and exploring other, other ways that we can produce this field, such as an air core circuit where we don't use um, the ferromagnetic material. And so like you see on the top right here, I, you know, discretize the thruster body and learn using a uh, form of machine learning the currents needed in each of these coils to reproduce a given set of magnetic fields. And, to, and because the currents in these devices might be really high, we might use something like a bitter magnet, which can handle these um, high currents. Um, and so the focus of my research overall is um, to explore new ways that we can increase the fact magnetic field strength. And so if you like this video and want to um, learn more about what our lab does or what I do or some, you know, some of my colleagues, um, visit us on our website at the Plasma Dynamics Electric Repulsion Laboratory. Thanks for listening.